Welcome back to Crimson Tide kickoff. I'm meteorologist Richard Scott. It's football Thursday, not a Saturday. We have a Thursday game today, and the weather absolutely perfect. It feels like football conditions outside. Let's take a look at our tower camera right now. Bront Denny Stadium starting to load up. Lots of people are already showing up there. You see in front of the north end zone, and the current conditions added on to that. It's starting to cool off a bit, 60 degrees. It feels cooler than that. Northwest breeze at six miles per hour, making it feel a bit more chilly to us. Dew point temperature at 50, so some dry air. Even though we have the cloudy skies in place, we're not expecting any rain. So let's show you the temperatures elsewhere. You notice to our northwest, towards Memphis, Tennessee, a bit cooler. There's a cold front making it through the state now. That's dropping those temperatures back to our northwest. So this evening, temperature's going to drop like a rock. In fact, a lot of clouds still around, though. So that is one thing that's going to keep our temperatures from dropping the next couple of hours. Our regional satellite and radar composite shows that. What all is happening? There's a cold front that's making it through the state now. It's pretty much exiting southeast Alabama. And you see the northwest wind. That's what's bringing the cooler conditions in. We'll still see the clouds around, but the good news is no rain in the forecast. And a little bit later on in the show, we're going to take a look at the SEC football forecast for uh, Saturday. You know, today's Thursday, but we'll talk about some Saturday forecasts across the SEC. John and Gary, take it away. All right, Richard, thank you very much. You know, anytime you start up a football program, you're going to have a number of firsts. First win, first road game, first overtime contest. But this has to be the most, probably the most unusual that I've ever heard of. Tonight's game for Georgia State will be the first time that they play on natural grass. The Panthers home field, the Georgia Dome, obviously has artificial turf, as does the sites of all three road games that State has played at to this point. And for somebody that's an expert on Georgia State, we bring in the sideline reporter of the Georgia State Radio Network, Harper LaBelle. How are you, sir? I like grass. Grass is kind of nice, yeah. but nobody plays on it that's anymore. Right. It's good, okay. to be, uh, good to see it here at the stadium. This place is gorgeous. It's absolutely immense. The, a, the, the whole thing is wonderful. One other quick note, John. Right. Harper informed me as we were in the break before the interview that this is also the first time a defending national champion has ever played a first-year football program. Yeah, that's an amazing yeah. stat that you would think some course of time would have said, no, that's, that's happened before. But obviously, it's the first time. and. So very unique for Georgia State to be a part of that. A little bit of history tonight. All kinds of history. Yeah, great stuff. Well, let, Harper, let me ask you about the uh, the first year, six and four. Uh, but obviously, I mean, that that's a, a good record considering where you guys have come from. You're building a program. And even some of those losses, I think one of them you lost by, by five points. The other you lost in overtime. And, and Jacksonville State. Yeah, just, yeah. just talk about the first year and the, the process of building a program. When you start anything from an idea and a concept and then we're able to put it to where you're playing an actual live game and do it in just a couple of years is uh, pretty amazing. And a lot of teams, I think college football in general, is wanting to grow. Uh, you're going to see that this campus, uh, the stadium has grown and different markets across the country. So from a business perspective, if you're a university and you have a chance to say, we want to put a program together, how do we do that? Where do we go? What, what do you start with the idea and the concept behind it to where you get to, like Alabama, you play for 116 years? And it's not easy. There have been a lot of decisions that have had to get made and a lot of money needs to get raised and you got to have a place to play. Not everybody has that, but we've been real fortunate at Georgia State to have that put together in a way where we were told we couldn't do it. And this is Coach Curry from earlier this week. We were told we couldn't do A or B or C and yet we just keep rolling and get it done. So six and four, as you mentioned from the outset, it's not perfect. Obviously, there's a few games that uh, we wish you could have got those back, but uh, not too bad. You know, South Alabama just uh, down by the Gulf, uh, they haven't lost a game yet. Right. They're doing some things right there, but they're building a, a program. Last year, they only played seven games. Just in, in August, it couldn't right. even fill a schedule because there weren't a lot of people that wanted to play them. Now it's for real, and there's a lot of schools that are out there that are wanting to participate and be a part of what you've got here. Maybe someday it'll be even bigger. Speaking of Coach Curry Harper, I mean, what a what a great opportunity for Georgia State. Now, let's mention this too. Now, this is not a small school. This is a school with 31,000 students in a major, you know, metropolitan area. Great recruiting base, but still, for him at 68, having played at the highest level, coached at the highest level, to come out of retirement basically and, and, and take over this program. I mean, it takes uh, it takes a lot of energy, and he seems like he hasn't slowed down a bit. Yeah. If if you don't mind me saying so, he had a pretty good deal going with ESPN. Right. Right. And he was available, and for him to take the position. Now, would Nick Saban have taken it, or would Pete Carroll? They already had positions. They already had jobs. But to get somebody of his quality, his character, the type of individual that he is, and what he's 
on paper and even in real life said that this is what I want to accomplish and I'll help you do that. If you give me the wherewithal, I'll do everything I can. Uh, I don't think you could have picked a more perfect candidate. So it's been actually probably the best possible scenario that Georgia State could have put together at that time. And his ties to the Atlanta area, that has to be a big boost too. Not only from there, went to school there, he coached at Georgia Tech there, and if you just take, uh, in general, you could close your eyes and you could pick California, Texas, Florida, and you could recruit there and pretty much, you know, throw a, a dart against a high school and come up with some kids. Uh, Georgia is now becoming one of that. I believe 12 kids now on Alabama's team right. currently are from the state of Georgia. So there's a better brand of football in the high school area there, and, and it's being exposed, and people are seeing that. And so, yes, we'll be in a recruiting battle with a lot of big schools. Yeah. We've got about 30 seconds left. I want you to kind of tell us, you were filling us in the break about Star Jackson, yeah, the former Alabama quarterback. Uh, went to Georgia State in the offseason. Uh, I think a lot of people thought that he would just immediately go in there and start. He's listed as third on the depth chart, but you said he, he got sick over the offseason. Yeah, there was an illness earlier in uh, uh, training camp during two days, and uh, other quarterbacks were able to surpass him. Drew Little was one of those, and he might get a chance to play tonight, but uh, we've got Alabama, we got an Auburn. Is that okay? Can when I say that word you here can say on this it. network? You can say it, yeah. Uh, Georgia's a state. We've got a couple of Central Florida kids. I mean, there's some young men that have said, we're going to leave where we are, or we're not happy where we are and we're going to go somewhere else. This sideline pass, this is for tonight's game. What would next week's one be worth? Just a, oh, uh, oh, Is there a price tag you can put on that? If you get away with selling it, it would oh, be a lot. Yes. Hey, final 15 seconds, your broadcast, you can do it. What, what is it reasonable to expect from Georgia State in this game? What are the Panthers hoping to get out of well, it? Well, let, let's do the Miracle on Ice or the Appalachian State or, you know, e earlier this year, the Jacksonville State. If they play everything that they have and Alabama plays their B, C, D game, then maybe they've got a chance to do something. But if you just match everything up, on paper, you look at the size, the, 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 the speed and all that and the experience, you know, Alabama is going to have a, a fairly easy time tonight, you would think, but um, I would be defeating my purpose and so would you if you went in any locker room and said, play hard, give everything you have and you never know what's going to happen. That's right. And that's what uh, our coaches are doing just like you guys would do. Absolutely. Well, Harper, thank you very much. So much. Oh, great pleasure to be here, guys. And, thank uh, you so much. We, uh, we certainly appreciate it. Well, you know I'm getting looked at. I'm the only guy wearing blue here on the whole <laughs> campus, so I look only like... Only one wearing short sleeves also. Well, yeah, here, it's know. a little cooler tonight, but that's okay. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you thank so you much. Harper. And coming up next, the best of the best, the worst of the worst in the SEC. We'll, uh, we'll talk about how LSU coach Les Miles is politicking for a one-loss team to play in the BCS title game should Bama beat Auburn. And we'll tell you how Ole Miss coach Houston Nutt is politicking to keep the Ole Miss faithful happy. You're watching Crimson Tide Kickoff. And welcome back to Crimson Tide Kickoff. As always, John and myself are outfitted with original elephant wear from the locker room located on the university strip just up from where we're sitting right now for 46 years the locker room has provided Tuscaloosa with the finest menswear available and that includes original elephant wear it's the rage in fact I've seen guys wearing it all over campus this afternoon as they get ready for the Tide in Georgia State tonight. Now you can go by the locker room Monday through Saturday. Rush and Alex will help you get outfitted in original elephant wear or you can look them up online. You can actually order online from the locker room They've got their inventory available. Check them out. You need to be outfitted in this original elephant wear. Everybody has gone crazy over it. John? Well, Gary, believe it or not, when Alabama and Auburn play next Friday, there might not be any bigger Alabama fan than Les Miles and the LSU Tigers. Here's why. He's hoping that Alabama will knock off Auburn. That's because his team will then have a chance to finish at 11-1, become the highest-ranked SEC team. Even though the Tigers won't play for the SEC championship and the Auburn Tigers will, Miles' experience won't allow him to count himself out of the BCS picture. Remember, LSU won the national title with two losses a few years back. It's an imperfect system. Obviously, the perfect system is off. Um, but you know, all the great things that the bowl system has given college football, you can't be overlooked. Meanwhile, from one of the best in the West to the worst of the West, Houston Nuts team has just one SEC victory this season. And on Monday, the coach made a passionate plea uh, when he urged fans not to turn their backs on the Rebels program. Look at this, though. You think Florida's happy? You think Georgia's happy? There's going to be a year in this league, the greatest league in America, there's going to be a year where things don't go just right. 
but it ain't all about gloom and doom. So here's the rest of the SEC schedule for Saturday. Make your appointment in front of your television for these games, 11:21. Troy at South Carolina, Appalachian State at Florida at 11:30. Ole Miss at LSU is the CBS game this week. Arkansas, Mississippi State, 6 o'clock, and then the late game, Tennessee at Vanderbilt at 6:30. Now for a look at your SEC forecast for the weekend. Here's meteorologist Richard Scott. Hey, John, yeah, let's talk some weather. Today, it's cold for the Alabama football game, but let's take you to Saturday, show you kind of look ahead for us, talking temperatures at the Ole Miss LSU game around 2.30 kickoff time. Gorgeous conditions, 70s in the forecast. We fall into the lower 70s at the end of the game, still lots of sun. We take you over to Starkville, Mississippi, Arkansas playing MSU Bulldogs there. It's going to be a night game, 65 degrees by 6 o'clock. As we end the game around 58, temperatures do begin to get quite chilly towards the end of the game. And finally, Appalachian State happening in Florida. A nice game there. Lots of sunshine. Gary, a little bit later in the show, we'll take you to the all-important Alabama football forecast that's coming up a little bit later. Thank you, Richard. Still to come, our guest prognosticator. He played football at Alabama, and he just recently coached a team to a state championship right here in Tuscaloosa. You'll meet him. But up next, we'll talk with a man who played professional baseball, was in a major league front office and won an NBA title as an NBA executive. But we're going to talk to him about authoring a book on Bear Bryant leadership skills. Pat Williams will join us live next when Crimson Tide kickoff comes back in just two minutes. 